If you ask any Land Rover or Range Rover Facebook page what the best diagnostic tool to use is, 99 times out of 100, they're going to recommend you this, the IID tool from Gap. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the earth, and the IID tool. And I too have been guilty of giving out that blanket advice, both here on my YouTube channel and on Facebook and around the internet as well. Suspension calibre, IID tool. Adaptive dynamics, IID tool. Configuration editing, IID tool. And the reason for that is that it is genuinely a very good, very powerful tool that I actually carry everywhere with me that I go in the Range Rover. However, it is fairly pricey at around 500 euros or over 400 pounds. And for that sort of money, you can actually buy some pretty powerful, pretty serious, generic OBD2 diagnostic tools, as you guys can see here. So my idea for this video is to try and find out if any of these tools can dethrone the mighty IID tool uh, if you own a Land Rover product, particularly if, like us, you own more than one brand of vehicle. Now we know that all of these tools were more than capable of diagnosing basic engine-related fault codes, but what about more advanced systems that you maybe don't get on every brand of vehicle? I'm talking, of course, with the Range Rover about the air suspension system. And that's a system that has given more than a few owners more than a few causes for concern over the last few years. So to test their metal, I'm going to generate an air suspension fault on the Range Rover by unplugging one of the height sensors that are on each corner of the car. Now we know for certain that the IID tool is perfectly capable of reading this kind of fault, that's its bread and butter, but will these multi-brand diagnostic tools be able to interrogate the specialised air suspension controller on the Range Rover? Let's find out. But first, let's take a quick look at the challenges which are lined up to take on the IID tool. In no particular order, first we have the Autofix D1 Lite. In the words of the manufacturer, the D1 Lite is a professional diagnostic tool with a 7-inch touchscreen that focuses mainly on services, reading and deleting DTCs for complete systems, as well as various reset services such as oil reset, EPB, SAS reset, etc. There seems to be quite a wide range of pricing online for these tools, ranging from around £269 as the best price that I found, all the way up to £425 but the average price falls somewhere around the £300 or €350 Euro mark, which puts it firmly below the price of the IID tool. Next up, we have this X431 series tool from Launch, specifically the CRP919 version, which, in the words of the manufacturer, is a bi-directional scan tool with 29 plus service functions, all system diagnostics, immobiliser and coverage of 100 plus brands. Unlike the other two systems on test, the launch doesn't use a Bluetooth dongle and instead relies on its good old fashioned cable. Pricing for the launch sits around the same level as the Autofix at around £300 or €350, Euros, depending where you buy it from, which again puts it well below the price of the IOD tool. And then finally, we've got an offering from a familiar brand on this channel, the Top Don Phoenix Lite 2. The Lite 2 is more of a professional offering than the other two, aimed squarely at small garage owners as opposed to DIY enthusiasts, and in the words of the manufacturer, it's Top Don's new compact pro-level scan tool, which supports online coding for BMW, Porsche, VW, Audi, Seat and more, and covers 35 plus special functions for 200 plus manufacturers. As more of a pro-level tool, the Top Don does come in at a higher price of around £800 or €900. Euros. There we go. One height sensor unplugged. So that's that rear left height sensor unplugged. So if I put the ignition on now. We should more or less immediately get a suspension fault. And there we go. I'll zoom you guys into the dash so you can see that. So this is the point where most owners will get onto the Facebook owners group, post a picture of their dashboard with the suspension fault icon on there and ask what the problem is. Now some of the people on those Facebook pages do apparently have access to crystal balls so they are able to diagnose faults like this over the internet without seeing the car, which is really, really handy. But those of us that aren't gifted in the ways of arcane magic have bought a diagnostic tool and this is the point where we plug it in and find out what the problem is. So we're going to start off with a little Autofix D1 Lite, which is the cheapest of the three I'm going to test today. So this is one that has a separate uh, Bluetooth dongle. So we'll get that plugged in. So the D1 Lite does have a pretty nice little interface here, I must say. It's got nice uh, big icons, nice uh, images on here, makes it quite easy to understand what you're looking at. So we're going to go straight into diagnostics. Nice responsive touchscreen. Vehicle detected. It's detected it's a Land Rover straight away. That was quite quick. 
loading diagnostic program. Okay, that's the correct VIN number. Decoding the VIN, and that is our vehicle. So that's perfect. So not all diagnostic tools are going to be able to pull that VIN number straight from the vehicle. Believe it or not, some of them you have to input it manually to actually get the vehicle to be recognised. So we're heading to diagnostics, diagnosis, auto scan and see what it pulls up. So it took a couple minutes for it to run through all of those uh, many modules on the Range Rover, but it has pulled out quite a few faults. Um, and we, have we can see straight away we've got one here on the ride level control module, which is what we're looking for. So we're heading to that. Trouble codes. And there we go, we can see we've got a permanent fault code for the left rear height sensor supply. So there we go, that's taking us exactly to where we want on the vehicle. It's pointing us to exactly the right uh, sensor on the car, so that's very handy information. So I've just gone through a few menus there to get to this trouble code information, um, which basically is to give you an idea of what might be causing that trouble code, which is really useful to have on your diagnostic tool built in. Check if the height sensor connector is damaged or secure, check height sensor circuit, replace sensor if faulty, or clear the DTC and perform test again. So that's actually a really useful short little guide there on what your next step should be if you get this fault code. So as opposed to just giving you the fault code, this is giving you quite a bit more information there, which is really useful. That's really nice to see. And it was quite easy to access as well. It looks like there are also it also looks like there's some options here to freeze the fault code so we can save that or we can look looks like here we can head into the uh, live data which is pertaining to that particular sensor which again is really useful. So we can see straight away from this information that is pulled up the left height sensor supply is 5 volts so we know that the ECU is supplying the correct voltage so that's one thing that we can already uh, rule out of our troubleshooting if we had this problem on our car. So yeah top marks for the auto fix on this one. So the next tool we're going to try is the Launch X431 uh, CRP919 X. Nice uh, snappy name there. And this is kind of in more of a slablet form as you guys can see rather than a tablet. And it's the only one out of the three that I'm testing today that actually uses a fully wide connection to the car. Um, so a little bit more old fashioned, but some people might actually prefer this as opposed to relying on the battery powered tablet um, and the uh, Bluetooth connection to the to the adapter. So yeah, old school cable. We got to connect this old school D sub connection to the top of the pad, and that should turn it on straight away. So the launch is launched straight into this uh, VIN scan with a very annoying noise being played the whole time. Uh, I will turn on the ignition that might help it. Oh, there you go. It's found it. Yeah, no need for that really annoying noise. Okay, I'm going straight into a health report. So scanning through all these modules again. Okay, so we've got some faults that it's brought up. Again, we've got ride level control module, ab abnormal. We can see that rear left height sensor supply fault again. But can I see some more info on that? So we're heading to the module, uh, read fault code. Rear left height sensor supply, permanent. So we've just got that code on there that's given us the correct information again. So now let's see if we've got any extra information in here. So straight away, a similar kind of readout to what we got on the auto fix just there. Nice uh, detailed information on what to do next with this kind of fault. So yeah, again, pretty good. We've also got a related data stream button here, which, which again has given us those two uh, data streams. We can select both of those, head into the live data, and again, got that nice live data feed straight away so yeah again very good very cool so top marks again for the launch no problem in detecting that air suspension fault right on to the top don so top don phoenix light 2 most expensive of the tools we're testing today by quite a margin so shouldn't expect this to have any trouble at all bluetooth connector on this one i should say all three of these units so far have had very nice looking touch screens nice high quality nice and bright you're not going to be struggling to see these in the uh, bright sunshine if you're working on cars outside Okay, so loading into the interface on the top don, let's head into scan, turn the ignition on, VIN scan, auto scan. Again, a slightly annoying noise whilst it's scanning for the VIN, but uh, luckily it's a bit quieter on the top don. It's got our VIN correctly there, which is good. I identified the car correctly, so it's perfect. So let's go, 
I'm actually going to try quick access on this to start, save us from having to scan every single uh, module on the car. Let's see if we can go straight to the problem. That is our car, that's correct. We'll go into system selection and we'll try and find, there we go, ride level module. So presumably we would know, because we've got an air suspension fault, we can go directly to the ride level control module because we know that's probably where the fault code is going to be lying. So we'll head into that, read fault codes, and straight away we get the rear left height center supply. So that's a bit of a quicker way of doing it than doing the auto scan that we did uh, on the previous two systems. Now there is also direct access available on both of those units as well, but sometimes you do want to do a full scan of the system to make sure you're getting uh, every fault code that's possibly logged. So let's head into this fault code. We've got the same help information paragraphs here, which are giving us the exact same information as the other two. So that's very good to see. And we've also got access to the related data stream as well. So we can see those height sensors, the data that we're on here. Um, it's also giving us on here the standard range, so the expected range uh, of what, what you expect to see on these, these sensor readings. So that's always good to see as well. So again, that's top marks for the top DOM. So aside from the code reading that I've just been showing you guys, modern diagnostics tools also come with a set of functions which are collectively known as special functions. Now these functions pertain to a huge variety of diagnostic configuration or other control unit related tasks that need to be done on basically every modern vehicle. Now the specific special functions that are included on any given diagnostic tool can be a huge range. Some of these tools are advertising special functions lists of over 40 or 50 different functions. But what I've done is come up with a list, a sort of acid test for Land Rover owners of eight special functions that we want our diagnostics tools to be capable of. Basically, these are the special functions that I think any diagnostic tool claiming to be compatible with a Land Rover product should have. So in no particular order, this is the list. Number one, suspension height calibration. Incredibly important for any air suspension equipped Land Rover. Number two, adaptive damper calibration. Again, for any Land Rover equipped with adaptive dampers, you wanna be able to reset and calibrate that system. Number three, service interval reset. This is a really basic one, but it's probably gonna be one that most of you guys might actually want to use yourselves. If you're servicing your Land Rover yourself, as I've advocated on this channel lots of times before, you're gonna to want to be able to reset that service interval light that comes up on the dashboard. Number four, ABS bleeding. On these modern ABS equipped Land Rovers, it's very important to be able to bleed out the ABS system using the factory recommended procedure of using the ABS pump to bleed out the air from the system. Very important if you do any brake work on the car relating to the brake pipes or the ABS pump itself. Number five, forced DPF regeneration. Now this one won't apply to all modern Land Rovers, but from about 2010 or 11 onwards, most diesel Land Rovers were fitted with DPFs, and there are some situations where you might want to force a DPF regen. So that functionality would be quite nice to have if you have one of those modern diesel Land Rovers. Number six, parking brake module controls. Now these are the controls that actually allow you to move the mechanism of the parking brake backwards and forwards to its mounting position um, so that you can actually work on the system. And it's also important for replacing the rear brakes on a car that has that electronic parking brake module. Very useful one to have. Number seven, battery replacement or BMS reset as it's sometimes called, battery monitoring system. When you replace the battery on a modern Land Rover, you do need to reset the BMS to make sure that it's happy and that it's charging the battery correctly. And again, that'll be quite a common one that most owners will have to do at some point in their ownership of a Land Rover or Range Rover. And then at number eight, it's car configuration changes. Now this might be the sticking point for our three generic systems here, but it's something that the IID tool is capable of. And it's possibly one of the main reasons why you might choose that over one of these generic tools but that's basically the ability to change the configuration of the vehicle itself. So things like adding or removing options, changing the way that the lights work and when they come on, or as in my case, altering some of the information that's displayed on the digital dashboard here to show kilometers an hour, which has been quite useful. Now I know that absolutely nobody, and not even myself as I sit here editing this, wants to sit and watch me sift through endless diagnostic tool menus. So here's a summary of how the three tools did versus the IID tool on my special function acid test. So first up, the diminutive Autofix D1 light started us strong and managed to hit 7 out of 8 of the special functions, only missing out as expected on the car configuration changes. Next up, the similarly priced launch managed to hit 5 out of 8. 
Like the autofix, it missed out on the car config changes, but it also missed adaptive damper calibration and surprisingly wasn't even able to reset or access the electronic parking brake controls, which I find somewhat surprising. This is a system which is pretty well covered by most diagnostic tools that I've used, so to see it omitted from the launch's spec list is pretty egregious. Finally, the top DOM was able to match the autofix and score 7 out of 8, again only missing out on the CCF changes. Another interesting advancement of modern diagnostic tools is bi-directional control. What this essentially means is the diagnostic tool is capable of generating outputs as well as receiving inputs. So this is used to actuate functions on the vehicle directly from the tool, which can be incredibly useful for fault finding. Say for example that your passenger window stops working. Is it the switch, the regulator or the relay? This type of fault may not generate a fault code, but with a bi-directional diagnostic tool, you can narrow down the possibilities quite a bit. This window works from a direct input via the top don. Therefore, we know the motor and the wiring are okay, so the problem might lie with the switch. Of the three tools, the top don and launch are bi-directional, and the Autofix D1 Lite misses out. If you want bi-directional control on the Autofix, you need to step up to the D1, which is a bit pricier and has a few other added functions. In terms of updates, all three of these tools come with two years of free updates. What this means is that whenever there's a firmware or function or vehicle release, you'll be able to update your tool for free for those first two years. After the two years elapses, your tool will still work the same as it did before, but you won't be able to add any new features or vehicles when they come available. You can of course purchase a license after this which will give you another 12 or 24 months of updates, but you'll probably find it's not necessary unless you're running the very latest or newest model of car. The only other significant differentiation between these units is the number of manufacturers which they support. The Autofix says it supports 80, the Launch over 100, and the Top Don claims to be able to support over 200 manufacturers. I honestly didn't know there were that many. As you'll have seen in the B-roll already, the Top Don also includes a really good selection of non-standard OBD adapters. These are typically used on older vehicles that were built before the OBD2 port that we know and love today was fully standardised. However, you'll find that every major manufacturer will be supported by all three of these tools, which is something that can't be said for the IID tool. So, to sum up then. The Autofix D1 Lite. It's a really nice form factor and it's well made. It's got a responsive, bright display with a well laid out and easy to understand interface. It's on a Bluetooth dongle and it's got a good range of special functions that will cover most owners' needs. Lastly, it's well priced. However, it does lack bi-directional control and it lacks any significant coding or CCF editing capability. Overall, this gets the Sam's Motor Room Machine highly recommended award. It will cover 99% of what most Land Rover owners and even small garages or mobile mechanics will want it to do. And if it had bi-directional control at this price, it would be a stone cold killer. But for an extra 100 euro or so, you could get that with the D1 version. Next up, it's the Launch X431 CRP919X. And apart from having an incredibly snappy name, it's solidly built, has a decent display and responsiveness, decent coverage of most special functions, and it has bi-directional control. And apart from all that, it's quite fairly priced. It does, however, lack some relatively basic special functions, and it does lack that Bluetooth dongle, meaning you have to deal with that old-fashioned cable. And the slablet form factor is looking fairly chunky in comparison to the Autofix. Overall, the launch is a pretty strong effort, but ultimately it's let down by some obvious omissions in the special functions department. It's also clearly a bit of an older design than the other two, lacking Bluetooth and a sleek form factor, but it's still a decent choice for the home mechanic or a small workshop. And lastly, but certainly not least, the Top Don Phoenix Lite 2. The Top Don has an absolutely massive vehicle coverage, comprehensive special functions, and it has the usual excellent Top Don build quality. The display is excellent both in terms of brightness and responsiveness, and it has bi-directional control and a Bluetooth dongle. It also comes with a huge range of OBD adapters for your old vehicles, and includes some fairly powerful coding for BMW and Volkswagen Audi. However, due to it being a professional tool, the price is a fair bit higher than the other two tested here today. The Top Don is a real beast of a machine, and it lives up to its designation as a professional grade tool. As usual with Top Don, it's beautifully well made, and it feels like it will last a lifetime. As a tool for a DIYer or enthusiast, it may be a bit overkill, but in a workshop or mobile mechanic setting, I can imagine it would be one of your most useful tools. Overall, it gets a recommendation from me if you're one of the aforementioned professionals, or even a particularly ball-in home DIYer.
Overall, I think there's definitely a case to be made for purchasing one of these universal tools over the hallowed IID tool. Configuration or CCF edits are the one outstanding item that's currently IID only. I've personally only made one significant change to my own CCF file, which was to add a digital speedo on the dashboard. Whether or not the IID tool was worth that alone, especially considering how locked down to Land Rover it is and the extra charges that they have to add more VIN numbers, you'll have to decide for yourself. Lastly, I've put some links down below to the tools that I've reviewed today, and the manufacturers have each kindly provided some promotional deals for us which I've linked down below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, or found it useful, it does help out the channel. Head over to my Teespring store if you want some cool Range Rover related merchandise, follow me on Instagram, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!